In this video we're going to have a look at the discriminant which is b squared minus 4ac or as we'll see later part of the quadratic formula and that's used to solve quadratic equations. We can see from the graphs that we've got three possible scenarios in terms of where the parabola may cross the x-axis. So in the diagram on the left we've got two solutions for where the graph crosses the x-axis and then in the second diagram we've got one solution and in the third case we can see that there's no solutions or no places where the parabola crosses the x-axis. Now the x-axis is also equivalent to where y equals zero. So here's our basic quadratic equation in general form ax squared plus bx plus c and if we want to solve that quadratic equation or where the parabola crosses the x-axis we're going to put y equal to zero. Now that leads us on to the quadratic formula and we can see here the quadratic formula and inside the square root is the discriminant b squared minus 4ac. Now the reason why that's significant is because it's inside the square root that means that we're only looking for non-negative values of b squared minus 4ac for that quadratic formula to work. If b squared minus 4ac is negative that means that we'll have no solution. So let's have a look at the possible scenarios for what we could have. If b squared minus 4ac is positive, in other words greater than zero, there are two possible solutions for our quadratic equation equal to zero. If b squared minus 4ac equals zero, then there'll be one solution to our quadratic equation, or in the case of the graph, where it crosses the x-axis. And if b squared minus 4ac is negative, in other words less than zero, there are no solutions. So let's have a look at an example. The first example is asking us how many solutions there are to the quadratic equation below, which is 0 equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. Given that we have a quadratic expression equal to 0, we can use the quadratic formula to help us solve this. So the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now the key component of this formula that's going to tell us how many solutions there are is inside the square root. That's the discriminant because we need to determine if that's positive, zero or negative. Now b squared minus 4ac in this case matches the values within the equation. So a is equal to 3, the coefficient of x squared. b is equal to 4, the coefficient of x. And c is equal to negative 2, the constant at the end of this expression. So we can substitute those values in. That's 4 squared minus 4 lots of 3 multiplied by negative 2. 4 squared is 16 and the product of those numbers is going to be negative 24. The result to that is positive 40. So because that's greater than 0 that means that we have a square root of a positive number. There are going to be two solutions because we're adding and subtracting some non-zero number so we will have two possible solutions. Now we can put this example in a graphical context. We can see here on our graph that we actually have the parabola y equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 2 and the y value equals 0 on the x-axis so we're basically asking how many places does this graph cross the x-axis. We can see there are two locations there and that means that there will be two solutions to the equation 0 equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. In this next example we're told that this equation does have two solutions but we've got an unknown value which is the coefficient of x and it's actually expressed as a negative k as opposed to positive k so we'll need to take care of that later. So what we need to do is acknowledge the fact that there are two solutions and go to the discriminant because that's the information that relates to how many solutions there are. So for two solutions we know the discriminant is going to be greater than zero. Let's have a look at that now in the context of this equation. The coefficient of x or in this case the b value is negative k so we square that and minus four lots of two coefficient of x squared and multiply that by 8, the constant at the end. And that's got to be greater than 0. So negative k squared is actually positive k squared and we're subtracting the product of those numbers which is 64. That means that k squared needs to be greater than 64. 
To solve this, it's probably best to think of k squared equal to 64 for a moment. For that to be true, k could equal positive or negative 8. And we need to consider both possibilities of that solution. Thinking of our inequality now, we know that k will be greater than 8. And the reason why that is if we consider possibilities of numbers such as k equal 9 and 10 which are bigger than 8, we know that k squared will be greater than 64. What about for negative 8? What's the inequality there? Well, if we look at a number line, we can probably make more sense of this. For positive 8, we know that solutions which are bigger than that, such as 9, 10, etc., they will square to be numbers bigger than 64. But for negative 8, it's the numbers which are less than that, which if you square them are bigger than 64. For example, negative 9, negative 10. So we need to express this as k less than negative 8. So the solutions to this are that k is less than negative 8 or k is greater than positive 8. Let's test this by substituting into our original equation. We'll put k equal to negative 10, which is less than negative 8. And if we simplify that, we get 2x squared plus 10x plus 8 all equal to 0. Now to solve this we can use our quadratic formula which we've seen before and we'll substitute in our a, b and c values. In this case b is equal to 10 so we've got negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus 4 lots of 2 is the a value and c is positive 8 and that's all over 2 lots of 2. Now going through and solving this inside our square root which is the discriminant we've got a value of 100 minus 64 and that's all over 4. Working through that we can see the discriminant inside the square root becomes 36 and the square root of 36 is 6. So negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4 over 4 or negative 1 and negative 10 takes 6 is negative 16 over 4 or negative 4. So by choosing to make k equals negative 10 we've shown that there are two solutions to this equation.